Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to try to answer the question, what is the greenhouse effect? Now, when we talk about the atmosphere greenhouse effect, it's not quite exactly what's happening in a greenhouse. So let's take a look and see what happens in the greenhouse and try to compare that to what's happening in our, in our atmosphere. And we're also going to compare it to being nice and cozy inside the sleeping bag. Now, first of all, here we have a greenhouse and the greenhouse typically is made out of glass. Sometimes we have greenhouses that are made out of uh, plastic where the, sun, uh, the sunlight can actually get through, but the, the effect is the same. The, the sunlight goes through the glass, goes into the greenhouse, reaches the ground inside the greenhouse, heats up the ground, and then that then will heat up the, the air inside the greenhouse. In addition to that, the ground that's now being heated is going to re-radiate uh, infrared radiation back into space, but that radiation is of the type of wavelength that does not that is not able to get through the glass of the greenhouse and because of that that infrared radiation is trapped inside the greenhouse causing additional heating to occur inside that greenhouse so the combination is that very little heat can actually get out of the greenhouse only through conduction through the glass and then having the air molecules on the outside hitting the glass and taking some of that heat away from the glass but the net result is heat is simply trapped inside a greenhouse and therefore heating the air inside the greenhouse. Now in the atmosphere, it's a little bit different, but the greenhouse effect is primarily caused by the, the what we call the greenhouse molecules in the atmosphere, in the troposphere, and specifically water vapor and carbon dioxide. Now in the low, lower troposphere, the water molecules uh, exceed in number the carbon dioxide molecules by more than 20 to 1. So you can see if you have a visual on that, there's way more water vapor molecules in the lower troposphere than carbon dioxide molecules. As we get higher and higher and higher up into the troposphere, the air begins to dry out. Far less water vapor will appear in the atmosphere at that elevation. And so the ratio of carbon dioxide molecules to water vapor molecules begins, begins to increase quite a bit. But at that point, there's relatively speaking so far fewer greenhouse gases in the upper troposphere compared to the lower troposphere that the effect that it has at that point is very different. And we'll get into that in just a moment. So what happens now? Well, we have the sunlight coming through and finally reaching all the way down to the ground, to the Earth's, to the Earth's surface. The Earth's surface will absorb that energy and then re-radiate re that energy in the infrared just like what happens inside the greenhouse. Now, a lot of that infrared radiation will then reach up into the lower atmosphere in the very first few meters of the atmosphere, and the water vapor molecules and the carbon dioxide molecules primarily will begin to absorb a lot of that infrared radiation. Quite a bit of it makes its way through all the way to space, but a certain percentage, about five to 6% of the total energy received from the sun gets reabsorbed by the greenhouse gases in the lower troposphere. And we really are talking about the first few meters. By the time it reaches 10, 20, 30 meters above the surface, much of that energy is already being absorbed by the water vapor and the carbon dioxide molecules. By the time you get to about two, 300 meters into the, atmo into the atmosphere, at that point, almost all of the available infrared radiation that can be absorbed by the greenhouse gases will have been absorbed. Now what happens is these greenhouse gases will absorb the energy and almost immediately within a matter of nanoseconds begin to re-radiate re -radiate that energy and that energy begins to bounce back and forth between all the water vapor molecules, the carbon dioxide molecules, and a few of the methane and nitrous oxide and even ozone molecules in the lower troposphere. So they, that energy just keeps bouncing around very quickly from one to another and slowly because the the um, greenhouse gases become less and less dense as you go higher up in the atmosphere in the upper direction because of course these, these, this radiation is being sent in all different directions but the radiation that's being sent upward will find fewer and fewer and fewer of these greenhouse gases in the upward direction versus the downward or sideways direction so that that radiation will travel farther up before it collides with another water vapor carbon dioxide molecule. And so slowly this energy is being transferred 
through the atmosphere higher and higher and higher and then finally gets to the point where there's so few water, so few water vapor molecules and carbon dioxide molecules in the atmosphere because the water vapor molecules reduce because the air gets dry, but the carbon dioxide molecules reduce because the air becomes so thin and therefore there's far fewer carbon dioxide molecules as well. And at that point, eventually there's almost none of those molecules above the, the ones that are radiating, and then the radiation simply goes off into space. The whole idea between the, in the, with the greenhouse effect is the rate at which this radiation travels through the atmosphere, slowly upward. Obviously, if there's more water vapor or more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, then this transfer will happen even slower, and now we can compare that result to what we would experience inside a sleeping bag. If you've ever been in a cold place with lots of blankets or with a thick sleeping bag, you then realize that the thicker the blankets are, the thicker the sleeping bag are, the warmer you're going to be underneath that or inside the sleeping bag. What happens is the energy from your body will radiate up through uh, through the air inside the sleeping bag to the blanket and at that point it will slowly transfer the way out to the outside and away from the sleeping bag. The slower you can make this heat transfer, the warmer you're going to be inside the sleeping bag. It's essentially, a thicker and, ooh, that's not how you spell thicker, is it? TH. TH. There we go. I'm missing something. Thank you. A thicker. There we go. Thicker blanket causes a slower heat transfer resulting in a higher equilibrium temperature. So that's the key to understanding the greenhouse effect. We will have a higher equilibrium temperature here. The heat being generated by your body will make its way through the sleeping bag or through the blanket. And the slower can we make this happen, the higher the equilibrium temperature will be inside the sleeping bag. Going back to the atmosphere, the slower we can make this heat transfer happen by having more greenhouse gases here, the warmer it will stay here on the surface of the Earth, the higher the equilibrium temperature. After all, the warmer the surface of the Earth gets, the more heat radiation or the more heat the surface will radiate, trying to get rid of that heat. That's a Stefan Boltzmann concept. And so, but the temperature at which we will reach an equilibrium will have to do with how hot the surface temperature becomes and how much the radiation is being held back by the slow transfer of this heat through the atmosphere through the lower troposphere. And so that's what we understand as being the greenhouse effect. Now again, large amount of water vapor and carbon dioxide near the surface absorbs all of that IR radiation within the specific water vapor and carbon dioxide absorption spectrum. And therefore, once it's all absorbed, then it's just a matter of how fast can it transfer itself through that. How long will that take? The longer it takes, the warmer it will be on the surface. And so we can see that more water vapor, more carbon dioxide will make this go more slowly and therefore it will stay warmer. You can see though again that it's the vast number of water molecules in the atmosphere as opposed to the fewer carbon dioxide molecules that play the predominant role in this greenhouse effect. And yes, increasing the carbon dioxide will have an effect. The question of course always is how much and so we can kind of have a visual picture of this, uh, of this event. But that is the key to understanding the greenhouse effect in our atmosphere.